Hello, America. America. All right, guys, we are like, I'm like a minute early. Going to do some neon belly. Fast forward a minute if you're watching a replay, and uh, you'll be there. Uh, or click around fast forward until you see me teaching. That's what I do. All right, now then. Do, do, do. Let me get my notes in front of me. We had a bunch of cool neon belly attacks this week. Don't know if you saw. I'm going to talk about some of them today. This is, I got, I brought Orko with me. He'll be my dummy in all of this. Wait, I did go live on, not just you. I did go live on YouTube, okay. And could be a little brighter, sorry for the dark. Sorry for my dimness. My teachers got used to it. Okay. Welcome and good to see you. Those of you who are sort of a minute early here with me or saw this on their feed. Man, um, I hope you guys caught the Monday Brain Dump this week. Uh, I'm going to watch it uh, over and over. Brad contributed some techniques in addition to the techniques that I sort of put in one place uh, there on that video for you, which is uh, all about attacks from neon belly. And I mean, teaching is a gift. I mean, it, everything gets clear for me when I have to get it all in one sort of streamlined idea to share with you guys. Um, you know, it was probably, it probably arrived in my brain that way where somebody had done that for me, but taking everything everyone has ever taught you and synthesizing it into your best description of a move uh, really helps clarify things for you, right? You'll get some details on some of your favorite moves from me as your coach, and you'll get uh, some from elsewhere, something you heard one time or a partner did and you picked up or whatever. So all of us are just machines that a lot of stuff goes into. And then um, when you share, when you have to share what you know, uh, it's just such a great experience, such a great teaching experience for you. So I learned a lot this week, not only because Brad showed a couple jokes, uh, which I will this week try to share with you so that um, you get to see them, uh, you know, sort of through my filter as well. Uh, but also because the moves that I know, you know, even just how to organize the, uh, the presentation of the Monday Brain Dump um, was helpful to me because it helped me see that some attacks start with four fingers in, some, of, uh, some attacks start with the, with the near thumb in, and uh, just all the attacks in one place. The great, great way to look at uh, the position to see all the attacks listed in one place. So that's what this is intended to be for you, the, the Monday Brain Dump. So I hope you do check it out. It's like a 25 minute video. But we'll always have it. You can always go back and look at it anytime uh, in addition to this week. So getting started, jumping in. Thank you for being here. Neon belly attacks. Let's start by talking about neon belly, the position. Brad had a way of describing it, which I thought was useful. And Brad certainly has spent a good amount of the last few weeks with his knee on my belly, neck and face. So I know he knows what he's talking about. He says... Uh, if you draw a line on someone, an X on somebody from shoulder to hip, that the center point is about where your knee should go. And um, we always say neon belly, the name of the position, neon belly. Um, but the center of that X really is the xiphoid process. It's the end of the, the bone here into which your ribs connect, your sternum, right? The xiphoid process. And man, when someone puts their knee there, you really want to move. And a lot of these moves come from movement. A lot of these techniques on offense come from a defensive movement or from natural movements that a person does in defense of their body because the knee on belly or the knee in this case on, on xiphoid on, on the center chest is uh, brutal. It's just, and Brad even says, you know, while we're brutalizing someone with our knee casually while he's teaching and uh, it's definitely true. So his idea was shoulder to hip is an X. You want your knee about in the center of that um, X and you know, one of the best ways I always, I ever heard, you know, neon belly described was my foot goes out in the shoulder line. My foot is out in the shoulder line. And from here I can launch my attacks or punches, whatever my, whatever my sort of next steps are going to be. I've got a dummy to practice these with. 
and you don't need a dummy at home. I, you could do this with a gi on the floor. In fact, I may mix in just doing it with a gi so that I feel what you feel. Um, so anyway, this week on uh, Tuesday, this evening, we're going to cover, you know, four or five of the attacks from the end belly. I know I have a little extended time because there's no uh, yoga this evening, if you guys didn't see, because Katie's moving, so she's in the middle of uh, boxes, etc. So let's start with our knee on the belly, or in your case, you might like to have a gi on the floor. You might like to have a gi on the floor because a lot of these involve sort of starting with some sort of grip on the gi. Uh, so I recommend it. Throw your gi on the floor and put these attacks right on your gi. Okay. I'm going to start with the first two moves. The first two moves involve my knee side hand, not the head side hand, not the one that's closer to the head, but my knee side hand reaching across the chest and four fingers in the collar. Boom. Four fingers in. I want to put that deep. And matter of fact, if you can, a lot of times because your knee is on the belly, the head comes off the ground a little bit. When the head comes off the ground, it gets only easier to slide your hand all the deeper. So try to get a nice deep grip here and now here. I would say one of the most common movements that a person will do when you put their knee on, on your belly is this here. They're going to use their other hand and they're going to put it on your knee. That's to brace a little bit, maybe take some of that pressure, but also they're going to try and turn on their side and push your knee off. So they're going to, boom, push your knee off, okay? And that's the protection of their body and organs, okay? I have this nice deep grip. If somebody does that, puts their hand on my knee and pushes me off and turns on their side, I'm actually going to go with it. And there's something I do to help myself go with it. Where, where my toes are a little bit of an anchor against that happening, somebody tries to push, and my toes on the floor here, help prevent that from happening. I'm actually going to, when I'm ready to do my move, which is that I've got my four fingers in the collar, I'm going to straighten my toes. And then when they push and roll up onto their side, I only need to chop down, chop, grab some material, and I do that in my fingers like this, the ends of my fingers. You don't have to get a closed fist. It'll be just, Pedro Sauer calls them your little, little fingers. So maybe I'm going to chop and get a little finger grip, and I'm going to choke right here. It's important to know that when you do a cross choke, when someone has turned into you and you're doing this, it's not only about bringing my elbow to the floor. The other hand can also pull up. And that's a piece of advice I actually got from Damien Maya. So Damien Maya did a seminar and I went and he showed a choke. It was a cross choke, I believe, from Nan Belly when the guy turns in like this. Okay. And I was like, you know, sometimes I have trouble because they tuck their chin. Like, getting under the chin or but getting my elbow low enough. And he said, oh, this is easy. He said, it's not a one-handed choke. It's a two-handed choke. So you can use both hands. So the other hand, this hand, can pull up like a lawnmower. Okay? And that, you're going to find that helpful in the finish of this kind of choke. Okay? So I'm going to do one more run here. Okay? The head may come off the ground from the pressure. And I'm going to get my hand nice and deep. Now, I'm going to unanchor my foot. I'm preventing that direction of movement by having toes to push off of. But if I lift my toes and I straighten my foot, a lot of times when they push the knee, it'll just slide off. And that's okay. I'm okay with that because I'm ready with my chopping choke. The reason this works so good is there's an open alley. There's, there's access to the neck because their hand isn't here. It's down here pushing my knee. Now I chop, grab with my little fingers, and my elbow goes down, but also my other hand goes up. And just to show you what's happening with my hands there, I've got my hand in the collar, the other one's over the top, and this one's dropping, yes, but this one is not just pulling material, but I'm jutting my, uh, my wrist bone into their neck. So I've gotten here, and when they turn in, it's this. This action is happening with that bottom wrist while I drop my elbow, okay? And that's going to give you a great, it's essentially I think some people would call this a paper cutter choke. Some people would just call it a cross choke or a reverse choke because it's the thumb in and not the four fingers. Um, regardless, I think I think I called it a um, like a chopping choke because they turn on their side. A paper cutter from knee push is another way to think of it. They push my knee, got my hand in. They push my knee and roll up. I chop, and I'm finishing this sort of paper cutter type choke here. Okay. And that's the first choke, and that's the first of two that use my four fingers inside. Same hand, same cross grip, same putting my hand in the collar that I might do for mount or guard. So I'm going to put this hand in the collar. Again, now for the second one, 
I want to point this out here. I think this will be a good angle for this. I've got my hand in this collar over here. Now, sometimes someone's hands will be up defending their neck, okay? But sometimes they'll bring their hand down. One of the reasons to bring their hand down would be to push my knee off, to try to push my knee off. If this hand ever goes below the nipple line or goes to touch my knee, I can always do this. I'm going to put my head on the ground. When I put my head on the ground, now even if they want to bring this hand back up, my head is in the way. So with my head on the ground, I can now push some material through, push some material through so my thumb fits, and then put this choke together here and finish a similar choke to the last one, except I'm keeping my head in the mix, on the ground, forehead on the ground, because it keeps <clears throat> this arm from being able to come up and defend. You know, they want to do this, but their arm is stuck. My head is here. They can't get up here in order to defend their neck. So I trap their arm out here, push some material through. I think that's an important step, pushing material so that I have a loop to put my thumb in. And now I can sh sort of shave my arm down the face and finish this here. But it's not the best angle to finish right here with my uh, head this far south. So I want to put my head between their head and shoulder. Boom. That brings all my weight to bear on this arm here, and that'll be a, that'll be the choking arm. So again, I was in knee and belly. If their arm ever goes south of the pecs, then I can put my hand on the ground, just because I'm not going to headbutt the floor. Hand on the ground for base. Now I can put my head on the ground. My knee can even slide off. I'm not in knee and belly anymore. I'm in sort of side mount now. Okay, and that's okay, because I want to be nice and low so my head reaches. Forehead on the ground, not the top of your head. Forehead on the ground. Push material, grab, bring this through, and finish by putting your head here. Not just here, which is in the way of the arm, but over here, which is in the way of the arm, but putting all my weight in the right place for the choke to be a good choke. So last time on this one, I've got my hand, my hand in the collar. Their hand goes south for any reason, probably touching my knee. But I'm going to put my... I'm going to come off of knee and belly and put my head on the ground, keeping their hand out. Now push material. I think this is an important detail. Push material so a little loop appears over here for my thumb. Thumb is in. Easy. Could be difficult, especially if it's tight, especially if I'm pulling. I'll never get it in. Push it. There it is. Shave this down and then bring your head over to here from the bicep to the ear. Okay. And uh, that's from Marcio Stambowski. I thought it was brilliant. A seemingly simple, seemingly basic choke, but uh, brilliantly, you know, uh, executed to keep the arm that would be defending the choke out of the picture. So he's pre-defending the defense. He's eliminating the defender. It's a, and, and Marcio is a big chess player. So if you're a chess player, sometimes eliminate the defender and then you can kill the piece. And that's what, that's what he did here. He eliminates the arm that would be defending so he can go right in for the neck. Okay, and those are two options from four fingers in. Okay, um, the rest of the moves uh, for the next little bit on the Monday Brain Dump and that I'm going to show today involve a different collar grip, but the same collar grip for all of them. So knee on belly here. This time I'm going to put the hand that, my left hand, the hand of the knee, thumb in. Knee hand, thumb in. Boom. Okay, thumb is going in the collar right here. All right, and I have a lot of options from here, but this is the one that uh, I'm going to show you first, and it's a looping cross choke. It's actually going to be, I'm going to end up with the same choke I just had, so I'm going to put this thumb in nice and deep. Maybe all the way behind their head would be a good place to have that, okay? And now when I get an opportunity, if they're pushing on my knee in particular, their hand, again, isn't defending their neck when they do that, this hand's going to chase the first hand in, so I chase it in, but this is four fingers in. So ultimately, the four fingers get there, but they get there a second. I start with the thumb. Four fingers chase it in, and now when they start to turn, I just loop, and I can finish that same choke with my elbow coming down and with this wrist jutting. Okay? So again, this one looks like the choke I did when I chopped, and is, but I get there a different way. I get there a different way. Start with the thumb in. Sometimes we're here because we're controlling a leg or we're controlling the collar anyway, or we're driving our weight. Like having this grip on the collar, common and super useful. Okay, 
but I'm gonna get it just a little deeper under the head so there's room to chase it in with this hand, which is going four fingers in. And now I'm gonna wrap the head to finish the choke, either here or, you know, when they push my knee, turn on their side to escape, that's a good time to be doing that as well. And again, chopping while jutting, jutting. This wrist bone should be right next to their carotid here on the floor, so that's why that movement is so effective, okay? So really, even though I start with my thumb in, which makes it different looking, I'll fix my thumb a little bit, it is the same choke. It is the same choke starting in a slightly different place, starting with the thumb instead of starting with the four fingers. Okay. You're falling apart, man. His pillow guts were falling out. Okay. Let's look at a couple more. Okay. So, <clears throat> Baseball choke. Baseball choke is one of our very common uh, chokes that you'll see from knee on belly. It's, I don't know if I'd call it a fundamental because it's very easy to not get all the details or have people give you a hard time. Uh, but this is, a, this is a choke used at the very highest levels. Very highest level guys catch other very highest level guys using a baseball choke all the time. It is a super effective uh, choke that you should learn just as soon as you can in jujitsu. It starts again with my knee side thumb in the collar. This one's in the collar. And then it's just a different configuration. Instead of chasing this in here, I go four fingers in the other collar. But that means that I totally turn my palm up. Palm up, four fingers in on this side. Now, if I take my hands out of the collar, you can see why it's called a baseball choke. It's almost like I'm holding, or a baseball bat choke. It's almost like I'm holding a bat because I have my thumb in and then I put these four fingers in. And now, so thumb in, four fingers in, palm up is the very hard, hardest part maybe of the whole move to remember. Uh, is my, how does this hand go? Palm up, four fingers in on this side. Now, uh, Brad, I've seen different ways of people handling the near arm, which is going to be maybe your best defender as the bottom guy. Brad sw swung this knee in and stapled the arm. So he's now got this grip, and then he sprawled, walked around, and brought his head to the other side. And that's a detail he said he got from Marcio bringing the head to the other side, which is a very good detail on, on a baseball choke. Okay, so let me look at that one more time. Knee and belly, thumb is in, four fingers palm up on the other collar over here. So now it really feels like a baseball bat. Okay, and, I'm, and, and Brad did this from here. He caught this arm out with his knee, with his near knee. And then he sprawled, walked around and brought his head to the other side, which does add weight to your elbow to finish that choke. I was expecting, honestly, I was expecting Brad to say something slightly different um, about the knee that he trapped with, but it was certainly effective, and he's, he's, this, is, this is his choke, man. So if you're old Brad, he'll probably catch a baseball line at some point. Um, but I have seen this arm peel that with the other knee, and I just want to show you what that looks like because uh, both are good options, okay? From knee on belly, thumb is in, four fingers are going in this side. Then I get this nice deep grip. The deeper you can get this thing, man, the better. Okay, and now if this hand is up and, and defending, I have seen people cut this knee through, boom, cut that knee through. And you can see that I've already got the point on the ground with my knee that I will turn around to finish the move. So that's the way I've commonly seen it shown, and then uh, Brad, who is a, this is part of his A game, Brad peels it out with the other knee, and both are great. They're great, certainly felt effective. So thumb in, four fingers up. He's, he staples with this leg. I've seen people staple this leg, and then come around from here. There's nothing special that I'm doing that you can't see in terms of with the grip. I just have the grip, and by the time I come around, by the time I come around, let me do it here. I put this in, and when I come around here and I put my body on this, I just I crush the X, and the X gets crushed on them. So you're going to be getting you're going to be getting the tap real nice with the baseball choke that way. And very interestingly, Brad has another finish on this that he showed in the Monday Brain Dump, which is this here. He's got the near thumb in. He sets the baseball choke up the same in every other way, except he 
from here, he looks at his knee, look at the knee that you've got posted, look at that knee and roll over here. Now, when I end up on the bottom, uh, some of you guys may know that you can catch the baseball choke from the bottom, but this is really beautiful. He catches this, he turns his body away. So almost like I'm running toward you. And there's nothing stopping this elbow, which the ground was in the way of before. Using the airspace now available to me, there's nothing stopping me from really closing that choke off. And it's very hard to deal with as the other guy. In fact, this finish is um, by his account. And, um, and according to Majid Haj or Majid Haj, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce, pronounce it, um, the higher percentage finish is actually this one, which was super interesting. I'd never seen it. I think it is more rare, so it's like it's going to be a unique thing that you know now. Not everybody's doing this move by any means. So the thumb goes in the collar, the baseball choke goes in. And, um, you know, the reason I say to look at your knee is just to make it clear which shoulder to roll over. So look at your knee and roll and then look away from the guy and you run through. I'm running, facing away from the guy, run through and finish. And that's another way to finish the baseball choke, which according to some great sources is actually the higher percentage finish on it. So uh, very cool move. I don't always tell you to pull people on top of you for sure, but um, there's no doubt I've had this happen to me. Majid caught me with this and Brad has caught me with this. When they roll, it's hard to, it's hard to do anything about because they have so much free space to finish, to get a good, a good bite with that choke. So very hard to deal with. Okay. And I'm just going to show one more move today and then I'll summarize a little bit more today because we have more time. I know that we have more time since we're without yoga this evening. And that's the deadlift back take. If I put the thumb in, um, and well, let's say I'm even trying to catch one of our earlier chokes, really any of them could be the baseball choke. It, I, it could have been this choke, it could have been this here, um, could be any of them, but for the thumb, I would say, let's chase it and see if we can't catch the person here. And if we can't, cause they're blocking, maybe they're blocking my elbow from dropping or something like that. What I do is I take a single step to the other side of their head. So I'm here and I'm going to step here and lift them up. Now I'm going to put this hook over their leg on this side, and I've already got the collar in this hand to hand off to here. And with this hook, the bottom hook, which is honestly the more important hook, when back attacking and having handed off the collar this way, so they can't easily turn this way because of the choke. They can't easily turn the other way because of my, my back control uh, and hopefully my second hook. Um, that we've taken the back and are already attacking. So I just took collar grips, stepped over their head and pick, picked them up. And uh, I think a good point to recognize is I'm trying to wrap this choke and they're kind of not letting it happen. So I step and I deadlift. It should be a deadlift. It should be a hip movement. Hips come up and then slide this bottom leg in and feed this collar. Now I can already be looking for you know, some of our earlier chokes that we've done from here, from the back. One more time. Let me, let me grab, I'm going to switch to the gi from the grappling dummy. A, he's falling apart. B, this is what you guys are doing. Some of you guys. So I've got knee on belly, right? I put this in. I'm trying to catch this choke, but maybe he's blocking my arm. So I step over here, pick him up, put my hook in, and then pass this collar around. I'm looking for chokes now here for that last choke. So let's look at all the chokes real quickly. Knee on belly, four fingers in, I gave you two options. One was to straighten my toes, let them roll up and then chop to finish here as they roll up into me. The other one was Marcio's thing where I've got one hand in the collar and they touch my knee. So I put my head down on the mat and I come to essentially to side mount, push material through, grab it, wrap the head and I'm here. And meanwhile, their arm is stuck out of the picture. When I go to finish this choke, I will put my head next to their head though. Okay. And then we talked about thumb in ones. We talked about one, two. Essentially we talked about the looping cross choke and the baseball choke with two variations and then the deadlift. So 
The thumb in ones, you can think about the looping cross stroke. So this one chased by this one and then wrapped around. Okay. I chase this hand with this hand. I have my two grips on one side of the head and then I bring my elbow around to the other side. Talks about that one and then we talked about the baseball stroke. This is in and then I put this in and I either cut my knee across here or cut this knee across here and finish. Or I rolled this way to finish here. So we just did the looping choke and the baseball choke, although there were two baseball variations. So again, four fingers in, we had the chopping choke, and we had Marcio's head to the mat. Chop or the head to the mat to keep the defending arm out. With the thumb in, we had the looping choke, and we had the baseball choke. Either, either I roll off or I do it on the side I'm on by walking around the head. And then the last thing we talked about was you know, if you're setting these up and they're just, they're defending to where maybe this hand is blocking my elbow from dropping. They're blocking that. Well, maybe I just step over the head, pick them up, and take the back. Here, look for, look for jokes from there. Okay, these can all be practiced like, as I just did, kind of with no, no dummy, just with a gi, and that's fine to do. If you have even a pillow, it's probably good practice to throw a gi on it and try. But uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. That is uh, one, two, three, four A and B, five, five different chokes, a couple different entries, uh, finishes for the baseball choke, but five different chokes for a Tuesday night. I think that's real good. And we even did actually finish on time. So any questions, by all means, let me know. I'm gonna check for questions before I get off in case they're in here. Steve Ross, what's going on, man? I'm just seeing your comment because I just looked at YouTube. And let's see. Just checking Facebook for questions before I let you guys go. We are two weeks, if you're still with me, we are two weeks from the beginning of phase one, partner groups outside. So uh, be ready to start booking yourself. You can book them in advance as far as 14 days. So if you're trying to train on July 6th or 7th, um, I think you can already book on the 6th today, tonight, um, or by the time you see this, if you're seeing this tomorrow, you can book on the 7th as well. That's Monday and Tuesday. Uh, the only reason that you won't see available time slots at night on Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's because I uh, will be doing the kids' classes. Kids will be my partner. So I'm not partnering with anyone because I'm going to be working with the kids. Um, so I won't be a vector. But anyway, I look forward to being on the mat with you guys. I see no questions. And so I want to thank you for coming down. It's great to see everyone. If that's Colin, uh, it's great to see you, brother. And... Um, Check out the Monday Brain Dump is all I can say. It's just a really good collection of a ton of neon belly attacks. We'll always have it. I'll always, I'll probably link, link, it, link to it in the future when I talk about some of this stuff in class because it's just something you can pause and rewind. And because Brad taught a few that even I didn't know. So very nice. Good to be with you guys. Have a good night. I'll see you soon. Take care. And YouTubers, thank you for being here. I'll see you guys soon. Bye, Steve.